Hello, everybody, and thank you for tuning in to the Liberty Report. Uh, today is the day we usually do Mythbusters, and the co-host is Chris Rosini, who is also the editor of the Ron Paul LibertyReport.com. Although this is the day we do Mythbusters, we're going to change our program a little bit because of the very uh, interesting and exciting news coming out of Europe today. I generally uh, go to bed pretty early at night and get up real early, but last night I stayed up late. I was watching financial news well into the wee hours of the morning, watching for the vote on Brexit. And uh, to the surprise of many, and it was a surprise to the uh, uh, market uh, players, uh, rather late, uh, they had to change their tune and found out that the, the Brexit referendum actually passed. So, Chris, uh, thank you for being with us today on, uh, on this uh, special day and special report. Yes, good morning, Dr. Paul. I also was up last night. I was on Twitter, and, and uh, I, was, I was cheering away at the great news. You know, our job is mostly chronicling, it seems, the downward spiral that we've been subject to, but it's nice to celebrate something good, something that's pro-liberty. So uh, I, I want to start with a question, Dr. Paul, for you. And uh, do you think the establishment will, this is a major blow to them, will they try to reverse this somehow? After all, this vote is not, uh, is not a binding vote. So what are your thoughts on that? They never give up. It's, it's sort of like the neocons in foreign policy. No matter how badly things turn out, they always come back and say, we have to do more of this aggression around the world. <clears throat> and that's the way it is on these programs like this. Uh, whether it's a Federal Reserve policy where lower interest rates doesn't work and running up debt doesn't work, they never give up because they don't have anything else. They're actually, their ideas are bankrupt. So in this case of, uh, you, you know, the destruction of national so uh, sovereignty, uh, the uh, forced uh, integration of many, many nations coming to together in a European Union, uh, it, it was doomed to fail from the beginning. I never believed for once that it would last. It's lasted actually longer than I thought, and it still exists. And the point is, is this vote doesn't cancel it out. Uh, but it sends a strong message, and that message is every bit as strong as a legal message. This is a consensus. I have often argued over the years that it is the will of the people that finally went out in the end. The attitude of the people, the, the beliefs that they have will eventually, you know, change the government. Sometimes it takes a long time, and uh, some, with a lot of frustrations, it happens. Because when people are doing well and they're apathetic and naive, they get talked into going to war, but they get talked into these organizations like the European Union. So it takes a while and takes a, a lot of time for people to really, really uh, put it all together and you obviously have to have a leader that tells them what's going on. And in this case, there uh, was a, pr a principled br British leader who was a member of the European uh, Parliament, and that's Nat Nigel Farage. Nigel has been on this program. We've talked about this issue many, many times, and uh, just several weeks ago, a month or so ago, he was on this program, but we have this picture of Nigel, and it's great because that guy is excited, and, f and for good reasons. It's not, like, it's not like when people do great harm and they have these uh, great successes for the military-industrial complex and they pass bad legislation and uh, the Fed makes announcement. Uh, th this is a move in the right direction, and he has a lot of reasons to be very excited about this and a lot of other people. I thought at one time maybe we should get a picture of the ones with uh, where their faces are downtrodden from the consequence of what happened last night because a lot of the establishment people that were betting against this happening aren't very happy today. But those are the ones who have capitalized and made money off this type of system. But it, it, is, um, it is coming to an end. The, the referendum, like we said not too many days ago when we talked about this, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't have legal effect. It's a statement, and it, it's going to take at least, the minimum is two years for uh, this to come about and the, the British actually leave. There will be a lot of votes in the parliament, but the sentiment and the attitude of the people very strong because Cameron had to resign from office today, the prime minister resigning. So that tells you that public opinion is very, very important. And uh, this is, uh, there's a long way to go. 
but it, it's, it is said because that system was not workable. It was done by force. See, I like, I like integration that's voluntary, trade and travel and exciting things like this, but as soon as it becomes forced, it's no good. The people suffer. The special interests get control. That's why you don't get free trade by having bigger trade groups, the WTO and NAFTA and all these things. You don't have free trade, but free trade is, is very good. So this is, um, this is to me, uh, very, very good that this is happening and proves that using force doesn't, doesn't work. You know, during the 20th century, they used force military, military force to force the, uh, uh, you know, try to create empires like the Soviet system. And of course, we've been involved in an empire building as, as well. But uh, I think in the 20th century, it's been less uh, the movement of millions and millions of troops around the world to take over. But in a way, there was a movement to take over Europe. Uh, I, and most of the time, I think it was against the will of the people and they didn't pay enough attention. So uh, since the failure is out there, I think this is dramatic. It's just hope the momentum can go in the right direction and people realize, I hope they can separate out, you know, the voluntary integration under sound money versus the integration that's done by force. That's what finally riled up the, uh, the British people. It was some economic things and regulations and things that uh, is going on around the world. But it was really the writing of the rules out of Brussels and involving, uh, you know, immigration and forced immigration problems. The British caused a lot of problems along with the Americans in the Middle East and this mass migration uh, coming through Europe in our country as well. People, people don't like that. That's a lot different than welcoming people who want to become citizens, willing to work and take care of themselves, and they don't get financed by the government. So what is happening is absolutely opposite of how things would occur in a free society. Yes, and uh, we libertarians, we always try to preach that if a power center exists, we, you'd want it to be as decentralized as possible. Right. Now, those who lust for power want the exact opposite. They want to centralize as much as possible, and uh, that causes big problems. Now, our dear friend, Lou Rockwell, had a nice little quote that I'd like to read, and he says that uh, Brexit is a victory for more than England and Wales. It's a victory for decentralism and secession. Now, secession's a dirty word, especially here in the United States, Dr. Paul. So, but please talk about these two key concepts. And, uh, and also, what are your thoughts? Can Britain be the first domino to fall in this uh, secession, well, with this secession idea? <laughs> Let's hope so. But, uh, you know, there was a challenge for me uh, several years back, and I think I had a, a bit of an achievement, and that is taking, uh, taking the term isolationism and turning it into non-intervention. And a lot of people use that now. Uh, but secession, what, what, uh, obviously I think secession is good all the way down to the individual. The best you can get, in world government, national governments, group governments, European Union, NAFTA, all this stuff, got down all the way to the individual if, if you can. Uh, but the, uh, the, the whole problem is, is people think secession is horrible. Well, you know, the British might have an antagonism to us because we believed in secession and we seceded from the British Empire, which wasn't too bad of an idea. Though they come back looking for help from us at times. So in a way, secession was, was pretty good. Now, what they want to do is make you think that if you believe in secession, that must mean you're a racist. You know, they turn and twist and do all this thing. But um, I liked it when Eastern Europe seceded from the Soviet system. That was a great secession. Of course, it hasn't morphed into anything spectacular because it was sort of, you know, grabbed up into the Western uh, powers and into NATO and other things. So I think that uh, secession is good. Matter of fact, I, I see this as an economic and a political event going on now because it had to do with immigration and economic policy. But what they didn't talk about and which they, it has not been addressed is the uh, unification of Europe and the United States into the military might of NATO. NATO is a cause of a great deal of trouble for us because they're the ones who spread the bombs and antagonism, stir up the trouble, and they come together and uh, they get organized when they want to deal with Ukraine and, and Syria and all these other things. 
And they're still in existence. And I think the British government will stick with that. They're very much involved. So in spite of this victory, there is still this other element that we have to address. And, uh, and someday that will happen because I think the chaos that we're facing today, this is just starting on, on, on the economic chaos. And uh, these are the rules, uh, economic laws that are driving this. And they're not going to be canceled out by the old cliches. Lower the interest rates, print more money, run up more debts, and, and that's, that's, that's all past, but they're not willing to admit it. But uh, as this trend continues, they will be forced to admit that the system that we have and the system I'm talking about is the dollar hegemony system that evolved out of the breakdown of Bretton Woods in 1971. That system will not last, and uh, it, we're witnessing a big crack in that system uh, this very day. Yes, and uh, I'd like to point out a, a big lesson that I got from this vote, and uh, it was from watching the nonstop propaganda and fear mongering. I mean, it was the media, the politicians, they were walking lockstep with each other, which caused those of us who supported to leave to think, oh boy, how's this going to happen? But this proved that no matter how much propaganda is out there and fear mongering, that it could still fail. It's not foolproof. And uh, so that's a nice lesson to learn from this. And we're now in election season here in the United States, and there's all types of lies and distortions being told. So how do you think that uh, this Brexit, if, if, do you think it'll affect our election at all or, or not? Well, I think it will. I don't think it'll be all, uh, you know, the most important issue, but the important issue, of course, that Trump pushes uh, related to some of the problems over there. So I do think he'll benefit from it, but, but whether he wins and beats uh, Hillary or not, I think there'll be a lot of other factors there. So yes, it, it, does, have, it does have an influence. And uh, the, the, the people, you know, uh, unfortunately are receptive to too much of the propaganda, which are lies, because of the collusion of the military industrial complex, the uh, media industrial complex, the, the governments involved in the politicians and all the special interests, the banking industry, they're very, very powerful. Uh, but even in spite of that, what is good about this is they, they were beaten, you know, uh, so truth does win up, but the sad part, it has to, there's not much prevention out there preventing this. All, all these problems of whether it was the Great Depression or the recent depression or runaway inflation, all of this is, is preventable by correct ideas. And uh, sometimes when the crisis comes, we will do the right thing. The crisis has hit Europe and especially the migration crisis, and people are angry and upset, and they're doing something, they're moving in the right direction, that national sovereignty is better than having government uh, out of Brussels to telling all the countries what to do and having a European Central Bank. So I think, I think this is, is uh, very, very good, uh, moving in the right direction, but it, it takes too long. That's my frustration that I have, and people are gullible. They're very gullible when conditions are very good. Uh, you know, when, when, nobody, when people aren't recognizing that the fiat dollar system is deeply flawed and it will uh, end, end, end badly, uh, well, right now it's looking good because everybody loves our dollar and to a degree they still are taking our dollars. But eventually they quit taking our dollars and then all the mistakes, whether it's this kind of mistakes of economic unions and political unions and, and the wars that are going on and the deficits that have been run up, those are all big mistakes and all the malinvestment that has to be corrected. So uh, it, it will be corrected. The big question is, are we able to get our message out and say there are answers to this? We know, where, we know which way we should go. It's not found in the uh, aggravation and the taking away of more liberties. Uh, just yesterday, our program dealt with why do they constantly use uh, you know, gun violence that are happening and say, oh, well, it's uh, t too much uh, liberty. Uh, we have to take away the Second Amendment and the Fifth Amendment. So they go in the wrong direction frequently. So uh, in this sense, uh, the British people have sent a strong message out. It might be narrow, but it's still a powerful message 
and a lot of people are watching, and there's a lot of other countries watching, because I think uh, this is the beginning of the end for the European Union, and, if, uh, and nobody's going to suffer from that. Only the wealthy banking special interests uh, will suffer any from this, but the people will not. But it is important that you end up with a government that has a little bit of common sense to create the conditions where people can go back to work again. Yes, Dr. Paul, and let's finish up. Uh, let's try to finish up on a positive note here. This is a positive story. If you could just for a few minutes talk about the power of ideas. That's what we try to do every single day here at the Ron Paul Liberty Report is to put out positive ideas and hopefully unexpectedly they could win. So if you could talk about that and what, uh, why should people look at this positively for the future of America too? Well, you know, this has been going on a long time. I dated back to Hammurabi, back prior to the Ten Commandments. There were certain rules, even understood way back then, about non-aggression. Uh, it's in the Bible, in the Old Testament, uh, sometimes with some flaws, but it was basically don't take, don't take stuff from other people. Don't steal, don't rob, don't kill. And those rules have been there, and that's the libertarian message, no aggression against somebody else. It's so powerful and wonderful, and the results are so good. It's amazing that we all seem, or so, so often throughout the centuries, people get tempted. They get tempted with power, and the other group gets tempted by listening to the lies, I'm going to get something for free, and the power people use the government. So I think that uh, the power of the ideas, I think the ideas have improved tremendously since Hammurabi's time, and even the time of the Ten Commandments were written. So the, I, I believe in the last hundred years, the principle of the non-aggression uh, uh, theory, the non-aggression that nobody commits aggression, and governments aren't allowed to commit aggression, is uh, better known than ever before, and there's a greater need than ever before. So there, there's tremendous opportunities for us to present the case, and it can be done in, in, in the social reforms. Uh, all activities should be voluntary. Nobody forces their will on other people. Even when other people do things you don't like, if they're not hurting, you just ignore them. In economics, it's, it's the same thing. Uh, we have a right to our life, we have a right to our liberty, we have the right to the fruits of our labor. It's a basic principle. And if, if, if this is applied to foreign policy, you have more peace. It's a shame that with this positive message of liberty that uh, you end up with more peace and prosperity than with any other system. It's a shame we don't do a better job in delivering the message. But even in my lifetime, I think there's been a tremendous uh, expansion of the understanding of what the non-aggression principle is all about and what freedom is all about. The founders did their best, but the Constitution hasn't really protected liberty in this country. But it takes a moral people to understand it and demand it. And uh, under those conditions, we could all be much better off. Chris, I want to thank you for being with us today. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Paul. And I want to thank our audience for tuning in today to the Liberty Report. Please come back soon.